Good morning, Enid. Welcome to show number 200. We're so pleased that you've joined us. Here we are at the end of the year, end of 2018. It's been an incredible year. It's been a very fast year. At least I think we all are in agreement that it's been a real fast year. But this is show number 200 and we're dressed for the special occasion. And we just want to say thank you for being with us each and every Thursday morning as we provided you Good Morning Enid. Our intent and our goal for Good Morning Enid is simply to um, keep everyone informed. You know, there's morning shows all over, all over the country and you can choose uh, a variety of entertainment ways to find out what's going on. But we thought here at the Enid Television Network for the past four years that we have the technology and the expertise and uh, the willingness with the, everybody involved to provide you a live television show every Thursday morning. And our goal is to keep you informed of city government happenings, the news, weather, sports, and everything that goes with the morning show. But I think uh, we're all in agreement that our key goal for Good Morning Enid is just really to entertain everyone and also to highlight a local Enid guest. Um, this is show number 200, as I mentioned, and we, if you stood everybody up in a single line, it would be quite impressive to see the number of individuals in Enid, Oklahoma, that we've highlighted. Um, it's just been a, a great experience for us this year, and um, one of the things that we do at the beginning of the show is we talk about the weather. Aaron has the, the bus stop forecast because we know school, you want to know the wardrobe you should wear, and we have the three-day forecast. And we also have a feature on this day, just to let everybody know that a few years ago on this day, um, it was 80-some degrees versus 10 degrees. But again, it's all part of the information we're trying to provide and keep everybody entertained. We all are, will talk about favorite shows in just a moment, and we all have different roles on Good Morning Enid. But one of the roles that Aaron has, Aaron Seveknik, uh, <laughs> happy pre-New Year to you, Thank Aaron, you. and welcome to show number 200. Uh, you deal with the school menus. Tell us about what, what school menu is all about. Yes, I love the school menu because <laughs> I get to see what's for lunch later on today. I think the main reason we do that is just so you know what your kids are going to be having later on for food. And I think to keep us on the know of what all these foods are. I think I took us 200 shows to figure out what wow butter is, right? <laughs> but we know what it is now, so that's also a reason why we like the school menu. And seasoned wedges. Yeah, seasoned wedges. <laughs> I think is... It's, it, what was it? Salt and pepper? Pet, pet, oh, well, we just made up some kind of, I don't know. We have learned a lot in school menus. Yes, we have. So, but Aaron does that for us each and every week. And again, we provide that information for you to plan your day. Well, we're always, uh, we've got the, the dapper GQ looking gentleman to our immediate left. It'd be to your right on the screen is Derek Silas, the bow tie guy. Derek, how many bow ties do you have? I've lost Hundreds? count. I've lost count. <laughs> <laughs> He's lost count. Yeah. But uh, well, we've had the Oklahoma Minute since the beginning of the show. And uh, Derek, Derek, tell us a little bit about the Oklahoma Minute, the, the history, if you will. Well, it's basically to, to show, share news, weather, and sports, you know, everything that's going on in Oklahoma and the nation. And I'll say we've had, I will be the second person that has been in this position as the Oklahoma Minute man. <laughs> um, <laughs> In the beginning, I was wearing ties, and then I just decided to wear a bow tie one day, and I think it caught on, and you guys said, hey, we can call you the bow tie guy. So that was that began the trend of the bow tie guy. Yeah, because those, those <laughs> things just, they really don't happen. I mean, you can't prescribe those. You can't force those. It just kind of happened. Yeah. And that's the best thing about it. Yes. So when you do the Oklahoma Minute, um, uh, you know, it's news, weather, sports, and you keep us updated on the thunder and stuff like that. But what role do you, you feel Oklahoma Minute has for the show? I think it just helps to, I guess, piggybacking off other sh talk shows. It, it just keeps the community informed of what's going on in the community and in the state. You know, that's why we gave it the term, the Oklahoma Minute, you know, right. to ke keep them all, all informed. And during this... Um, these four years, we've had several set designs as well. So I think it's been either four or five first year, we may have had two. But however, um, I think we'll just show them a few clips of our last four years and what we've, what, what the, the different sets and the different, um, some of the different ideas we've had in there. And I think so it's we'll, fun for us to go down memory lane. Right.
The $7.1 billion budget reflects cuts virtually across the board in order to make up for a $600 million budget shortfall. Ain't it physician Ross Van Hooser announced he will run as Republican candidate for the state Senate for District 19. The Oklahoma Supreme Court ruled to allow a petition permitting voters to decide whether to increase the sales tax to fund education. In local government Tuesday, city leadership attended Enid Day at the Capitol and met with state representatives. And that's the Oklahoma Minute. Well, I hope you enjoy that little video of going back, as we call it, down memory lane to see all the different sets and just really all the changes that Good Morning Enid has had over four full years. When we think of um, 200 shows, that's a big number, but uh, it puts it in perspective. Every Thursday morning for the past four years, we've come to you live on uh, Channel 12 and 112. And we're also pleased that we're live streaming ar around the globe because we've had former hosts and individuals that have been on uh, Good Morning Enid show that have, have an association with Vance Air Force Base. They leave, they go to Germany, they go to Japan, they go to Korea, they go to Nebraska, variety of places, and they get to stay in touch with Enid through live streaming. And we're, we're pleased to offer that opportunity. One part of our segment is um, we ask for viewer mail uh, viewer photos. We've had, Erin's had her brother who's a high, high jump champion. We've had different people, my grandson, pictures. And uh, it's a segment called GME at ENA.org and it's just an email address and we just encourage viewers to send their pictures of uh, July 4th uh, parties, uh, fall festivals, whatever, but it's gme at ena.org. Again, it's an opportunity to have this local flavor of um, Good Morning Enid. Well, we move into a real popular segment that we've had really, <clears throat> excuse me, for the longest time. It's called What's Happening. And currently, Aaron Seveknik, um, our model <laughs> of, on the show, uh, has what's happening. So tell us about that segment, Erin. I really love this segment personally. I think it's great because when I first moved here, I really didn't know what kind of events Enid had because it's so much different than where I'm from. But when I came here and started researching all the different events Enid has, it really has so many different things going on every single weekend. There's plays, there's parades, there's different kinds of shows like gun shows, horse shows. There is everything here in Enid and I think that's my part is just to try to tell everyone what there is so that anyone who's new here or anyone that just doesn't have any weekend plans, they can find something fun to do and enjoy Enid for all that it has. And we've had a number of um, co-hosts or, or hosts, I guess I should say, for what's happening. Yeah, there have been plenty of different hosts, different setups, I believe, too. So let's take a look at all the different things that what's happening has had and all the different people who have hosted it take your kids so they can enjoy watching uh, all their Sesame Street uh, popular characters like Elmo. I love Elmo. So, Good morning, Enid. This weekend we have a few events going on here in Enid. We have the Extreme Rodeo Challenge beginning tomorrow. And on the 12th at 2. You can get your tickets online or call the ESO box office. All this kind of fluid history about laws, outlaws, gangsters, uh, organized crime, and everything about the Roaring Twenties. So definitely go check that out. Good morning, Enid, again. Thank you for joining us for show number 200. It is our privilege to be here each and every Thursday morning with live television here on Channel 12 and 112 in Enid, Oklahoma. One of the key features of Good Morning, Enid, besides all the news, weather, sports, and uh, the What's Happening segment, is our interview segment. Our emphasis has been on finding a local Enid um, individual to talk about their lives or maybe something that's going on in their lives. And we all have uh, three favorite shows. Uh, Again, you know, out of 50-some shows in one year, it's very difficult for us to find our favorite. But we all took a few moments and <laughs> did a little reflection on uh, some of our favorite shows. So, uh, ladies first, we'll talk with Erin. Erin, uh, I'm sure it was kind of difficult for you to come up with your favorite. But yes, we have had... Tell us about your all-time favorite. <laughs> there have been so many different people on here that have been amazing, but my personal favorite was Taylor Spears, Miss Rodeo, Oklahoma, just because she was the sweetest person I've ever met in my whole life. She is. I, I second that. She is so nice. She's a great person, so involved. And, and, she, and she was so real. Yeah, she's so no, real. She's no, no performance at all. Yeah, no, she is absolutely <laughs> amazing. So if, if you didn't watch that interview, definitely check it out because she is wonderful. And here's a little clip of that interview. 
because you were Miss Teen, and the list went on. Tell us the titles that you had before Miss Rodeo Oklahoma. Yes, sir. Taylor. Well, I have been a rodeo queen since I was seven years old. So I was actually Miss Rodeo Oklahoma Sweetheart, Miss Rodeo Oklahoma Princess, Miss <laughs> Rodeo Oklahoma Teen, and now Miss Rodeo Oklahoma. So I truly have grown up in the organization. And of course, you can't forget your local titles that got you to the state pageant. So I'm beyond humbled. So what does Miss Rodeo Oklahoma do? So Miss Rodeo Oklahoma actually has the most interesting job of rodeo, I like to think. She is basically the face and the promoter for the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association within her state. Mine is Oklahoma. So I get to travel the United States, travel this great state of Oklahoma, end up in Enid, Oklahoma, and do so many different fun things with media, PR, visit all the schools. I talk to so many sponsors and so many humbled Oklahomans that are proud to say they're from Oklahoma, and it truly makes my job, unbelievable. You were in our studios a couple of weeks ago and I had a chance to sit down and we visited for about 30 some minutes talking about your particular role. But from the pageantry, I mean, you've got uh, the impressive belt buckle and your hat. Tell us a little bit about your, your, your wardrobe because I'm sure there's a young uh, little girl watching goes, wow, look at that. Well, thank you. Yes, speaking of everything, our crown has been in the Miss Rodeo Oklahoma family since about 2000, 2001. So this crown has actually been worn by Miss Rodeo America 2015, Lauren Heaton, as well as many, many different Ro Miss Rodeo Oklahomas before me. And growing up as a little girl, that was one thing that I thought was the most neat aspect physically about the appearance of Miss Rodeo Oklahoma was that we can truly all share a sisterhood through the crown. And then, of course, you can't leave your house without your boots or your belt buckle and, of course, your Greeley Hat Works cowboy hat. <laughs> so that's Aaron's favorite uh, show, uh, Miss Rodeo Oklahoma, Taylor Spears. And um, she was a lot of fun. Very articulate, professional, great representation or representative for the state of Oklahoma. Okay, Mr. Bowtie Guy, Derek Silas, it's your turn. Um, Again, you had numerous favorite shows and you were here on the set all the time. What did you settle on as your favorite interview? I think in the last four years specifically, I have always favored those shows that talked about causes or something that was informative about health or what have you. So I think within the last year, Dr. Punny has talked about men's health. He, he talked a lot about preventive ways and care, how to, um, especially for men over 50. And it kind of, you know, I thought was very informative. And if I recall, it was just a wealth of information. Right, it was. It just fact after fact and helpful information. Yeah. So I think that would be one of the shows that I would say was my favorite from this year. So let's take a look at that right now. I have no friends. The administration doesn't <laughs> trust me because I'm a doc, and the doctors don't trust me because... I'm an administrator, so Makes sense. <laughs> uh, it's sort of no man's, uh, no man's land, and I've been doing that for about the last three years. And there was some special connection to Ina that you were sharing real quick um, about your dad and the story you had. Dad, Take my, us back in history real my, quick. My dad worked, worked for Montgomery Wards, and we, we were talking about parades around the square, uh, and uh, one of my childhood memories was remembering upstairs uh, on that corner of the the northeast corner of the square uh, up there watching the uh, parade it was a bird's eye view uh, as the as uh, you watched either tri-state or the Cherokee strip sure. back in that day okay very good we're glad that you're with us <laughs> thank, you. thank you for those of um, for those out there this morning that are eager to hear about this uh, topic. Why is it important to designate a particular month during the year to focus on men's health? Well, I think the the issue with, with you know, we have a month for everything. Um, 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 breast cancer awareness is in October, I believe. Um, and so I guess men were getting jealous. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, and so uh, it's, it's just... quality. It, it, <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's, that's it. It's, yeah, it's about, uh, I think, uh, having... Uh, a month dedicated to it is a way to sort of get us to remind us once a year to maybe focus on on these kind of things. Men are not very good about going to the doctor. Men are not very good about um, uh, eating appropriate foods. Mm -hmm. Men also, compared to women, 
take a lot more risks. And so when you start thinking about this from a medical point of view, you really do need to try to figure out a way that you can uh, get their attention and uh, get them to focus on things that would be appropriate in helping them with their health. Again, Dr. Pontius, uh, one of uh, Derek's favorite shows, really all of our favorite shows, uh, because it was so informative. Well, Aaron and Derek, I'm, I'm going to rely on sports. I hate to do that, but uh, Kyle Davis is a recent um, member of the Enid Plainsman coaching staff. And uh, Kyle Davis has a r relationship through the University of Oklahoma football and, and also with, a, uh, I have a mutual friend with Kyle Davis. And we just kind of connected on the mutual friend, but also his history of being from Altus. He played at the University of Oklahoma. He also played uh, for the uh, Dallas Cowboys. He was involved in the Super Bowl game. And uh, it was just great to hear his story. And so this is Kyle Davis. Uh, former professional NFL football player and also a current um, coach at Enid High School. Let's watch a little bit of that interview with Mr. Kyle Davis. We still have to kick the extra point because Fran Tarkenton's over there and he could take him down to get a field goal in that last 25, 30 seconds. So if we don't have the extra point, we still could have gotten beat 17 yeah. to 16. Well, I'm three years out of high school, and I remember watching this game on, on our television because, you know, I was a big Vikings fan at the time and all. But I, I just love pro football. So what's fun for me is all these years later, I'm thinking, wow, I remember that play. I remember <laughs> sitting there and watching my TV saying, oh, my word, he caught it, you know. So that's exciting. Sounds pretty exciting, yes. <laughs> I was not there to watch the game, but <laughs> it was definitely great to see the clip this morning. Um, so I really like how you said every play is um, is hard play. It, it's, it's a important. big play. It's a big. It, that's correct. Um, so I, I kind of like that passion that you reflect. Can you tell us a little bit about how has the game changed or challenged you in college or professional football? The game's changed more from a rules standpoint and what you're able to do. Uh, they've, they're trying to make the game safer and uh, just the, particularly in professional football, things had changed back when, when I was playing. We didn't really have access to medical records. They sent you to a doctor or they gave you medicine out of the training room and so forth. Um, today, you know, the players make so much money and they're so valuable to the franchises. They have you know, they feed them lunch, they have nutritionists and doctors and dietitians and everything in the world going on. Uh, but because it's such a large entertainment industry and everybody's important to them at this point. Good morning, Enid. It's uh, 7.45 on this Thursday morning, August 2nd. And again, if you're preparing the day <clears throat> wardrobe-wise, it's going to be a hot one, high around 94 degrees. Our very special guest is Kyle Davis, um, also uh, new to Enid, if you will and um, coaching with the, uh, one of the assistant coaches with the Plainsman, which leads in to my question, Coach Davis, what brings you back to Oklahoma? I guess football, coaching, teaching, all of the above? All of the above. Um, my dad, who just turned 90 last month, uh, his family settled up around Cherokee in the run. His okay. grandfather came. And so he has some land over in that area. Uh, it needed a little tending to. I enjoy doing that. and. Um, Enid was a blessing, uh, kind of just happened, uh, God's will type of thing, um, because I was looking to get over this way and for it to be that close to where I was sure. wanting to be anyway, uh, it was just, just a blessing to, to be able to be here. So those are our three favorite uh, interview segments, and it was very difficult. Uh, we could probably come up with another 10 of our interview segments. But again, the whole idea is to highlight individuals in Enid, Oklahoma, and provide um, a, a great interview for us on uh, Good Morning Enid. And I'll also, if you have a suggestion for a guest for the show, you can send that suggestion again to gme at enid.org, and we'll follow up. We've had numerous people volunteer to be guests and reach out to us, and that's one way to help us to get your favorite guest on Good Morning Enid. So. Yes, and there's one other segment that we have that's another entertainment segment like mine, but it only focuses on the Central National Bank Center, and they have had so many great events there. They've had uh, an illusionist. They've had multiple different bands play. I think I saw Easton Corbin there. They have a they had a bull riding competition set up there, so they have so many great Be different Beach kinds of Boys, events. Beach Three Dog Boys? Nine. Yeah, they've had so many. Larry great. the Cable Guy. They had Larry the Cable Guy. Reba McIntyre. Oh Reba, wow. Reba's been here. <laughs> 
Yeah, so they've had so many different great artists, great other performances that they've showed us. So let's take a look at all of the different, oh, we had also had two different people, Brooks, Brooks started us off and Kevin, they've both been here. So let's take a look at all the different Central National Bank Center entertainment that we've had here and the hosts. Good morning, Enid. Thank you for having me back this morning. We have had a special uh, concert announcement this past Monday. We'll have Kenny Rogers, and he'll be here on July 15th. And if you haven't heard, we've started announcing our summer shows, and it's going to be a great summer lineup. Two have been announced so far. The first one's Dancing with the Stars Live. So, you aren't going to see the arena looking this empty very often, but we're getting ready for our next event in about a week. Or just stop down and see us at the box office located down on the second floor of Convention Hall at the Central National Bank Center. Until next time, we send it back into the studio with you, Steve. Well, welcome back to our 200th show of Good Morning In. We've enjoyed you in the last four years, and I think we can all agree that our very favorite segment of the show <laughs> is the pet of the week. Yeah. All in favor, raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> now, we've had various, so many different um, persons would come in, um, as the host for that segment. We currently have Charlotte. Um, we've had, in the beginning, the pet and the host would come actually in here, but after that, we've had them on site to videotape those segments. So let's look at all of the different types of um, animals and people we've had in that segment right now. This is right. Sammy, and um, Sammy is Sammy. at the shelter, and she has been there the longest for 18 oh, days, so we really want to make sure that we give Sammy at home. Today we have Maggie, and Mag I believe she is 10 Maggie. weeks old. Rod Stewart so did a song she... called Maggie May. <laughs> I mean, he's so calm and friendly. He's he's watching AJ there pretty yeah. closely, though. Well, we also have another special guest. We have Robin Shepard. Hi, Robin. Thank you for being here. This is Robin's first time with us today. We have she a Vizsla a Retriever mix, and her name is Poppy. She's uh, about a year old. And she's a female and about two months old, and she is ready for a new home. We've got lots of cats available and dogs too, so come by and visit us at Enid Animal Control. And again, we were all in agreement that uh, the, the uh, pet segment's one of our favorites. That explains why Aaron has 12 cats and four dogs at their home. Uh, it's very difficult. It's all Charlotte's fault. <laughs> it's all Charlotte's fault. <laughs> because when we see these pets, we want to provide them a great home. So, and thank you for uh, just your role in adopting the pets. And again, that number is 249-4910. You've made a difference in so many lives of the pets by giving them a second chance at life and a big backyard and a nice warm home uh, for, the, for their lives. So, well, we're, we're to the point where we want to wrap up the show. We're going to show some highlights of just a variety of pieces of the past four years. Show number 200. So Aaron, here we are at the end of um, 2018. It's amazing how quick this year has gone. Your thoughts on this year and also 2019? I guess I just really want to say thank you. I've really appreciated being on the show. Thank you, Steve, for letting me be on it for, I guess it's been one year now. This is my, yeah, one full year. I just want to say thank you. I really appreciate all of you watching and I've loved every minute of being on the show. Well, you do a great job for us, and we're, we're pleased that you're here. And Derek, you do, you do a great job, too. So Thank you. your thoughts as we look for uh, um, show number 201 in 2019. Right. Well, I, I think it's been a very good opportunity for myself as being on the show in the last four years. I traditionally was in IT, which is behind the scenes of everything, but <laughs> this has given me an opportunity to increase my skill sets when it comes to communication. I may have a long way to go, but <laughs> it's been a good opportunity, and I just appreciate you and, you know, being able to be a part of this. And speaking of appreciation, we all three, and, and AJ and Penn and Dane behind the scenes, we all appreciate your willingness to uh, watch Good Morning Enid. Here we are on show number 200 of live television in Enid, Oklahoma. Thank you for being a part of that because uh, we, we gather early uh, on Thursdays to do the show for you and hopefully it is beneficial to you. Well, again, thank you for your support in 2018. We sincerely wish you and I sincerely wish you the very best in 2019. Happy New Year. And as we close out show number 200, we have some video clips that we want to just kind of go back and remember what Good Morning Inn is all about. Enjoy this and we'll see you next year. 
I am ready. Good morning, Enid. And my mom, early in the morning, would come to the, the base of the stairs and she'd say, Steve, it's time to rise and shine. So that's where I got the rise and shine okay. 100 years ago, mm -hmm. okay, a long, long time ago. <laughs> Celery stick with wow wo but wo butter, uh, fresh carrots. Did I say that right? You know, you don't have to just go out there and just play golf. Okay. Uh, you can practice. I mean, we have a great putting green. We have a great chipping green. Just wanted to set the tone for the show today. Go Patriots. They pulled off another uh, win last week. Uh, and uh, Celery sticks with wow butter. Steamed carrots, wow, pickle spear. Even though we sound like we have the same last name, we are not even related. Okay. No, no question. Just, just, just want to make sure of that. So. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I set my sprinkler system to come on about one o'clock in the morning, and by the time I get up at noon, <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> have you tried the wild butter? No. It's pretty good, actually. It's, it's a soy paste mm. instead of the peanut butter. It's pretty good. Okay. You know, but because it was a, a rural area, most people never heard about it. It wasn't, it wasn't as widely publicized. But. You cannot say this is not an educational program. Due to the generosity of the community, we've had over 500 dresses donated. Wow. We've had approximately 60 girls come in and receive their dream prom dresses. 60? 60. The celery sticks, okay, and wow butter. I I'm love not that. sure what that is. Uh, what goals do you have uh, for the state of Oklahoma? I think I can answer that generally saying my goal for Oklahoma is that we beat Texas. Yes, definitely. You know, he's always been a generous guy. He really has been. But to give me a new driver, <laughs> I, I have to take back everything I said about Cody Lack. So. We're starting to get some, somewhat of a budget, I guess. I wore my Thunder socks today. I don't see, Ashley, that you wore your Thunder socks. <laughs> We're almost to 100, and I'm hoping to get there soon. We are hoping okay. for different things then. Uh, yeah, we, we have different expectations, don't we, Aaron? Yeah. Yeah. Oklahoma House of Representatives has how many members? Oh, I'm going to have to go with 101, oh, maybe, man. possibly. Congratulations. Do you know how many counties that this individual traveled to? Think about it. Pressure's on. Oh, 77. Very good. <laughs> wow, butter. Ashley? I understand that wow butter is replacing peanut butter in schools. Okay. Well, the, I don't even want to talk the, about the weekend. The, the, the heat's already impacted Sarah this morning, so just... Uh, <laughs> it is Thursday, January 26th. It's a cold morning. Whoa! But Santa dear, we're in a hurry, so climb down the chimney. We have There's Norman. Norman. Like we love Norman. Um, he <laughs> has turned into just almost like a little dog. He follows me he's around. He's a big and dog. He is. A very is. big cat. And he's very slobbery. Right. It's about... Uh, 65 to 70 miles of pipeline. I just thought I heard that cheer of all the kids <laughs> just just celebrating the fact that we're going back to school. That. I doubt there was a cheer. 44 degrees outside, kind of bearish weather. Yeah. You like that? Bearish <laughs> weather. So what's next? Uh, Will Phillips, uh, top running back in the state, uh, is returning for his third year as a starter, and he's only a junior. It's our college football show. And where did the go pokes come from, Andy? That went on the script. And celery sticks and wow butter. That sounds <laughs> like some pretty good butter, I guess. Did you ever imagine that you would return as a uh, wing commander <laughs> a, a couple of years later? Uh, yes. <laughs> we want to do everything we can in order to be able to make it better. And so this was an opportunity to do it. So, you know, jumped all over it. We're not offending any West Virginia fans, but boomer sooner. <laughs> well, no, we don't check every bulb. That's but, when they go out, if you don't check every bulb. Well. Yes, keep loving your heart, your heart. I'm a Ward 5 <laughs> Commissioner, Tammy Wilson, and I'm excited to co-host the show this morning. And so, uh, wake up, Enid. It's time to rise and shine. the wow cookie? Help me out. The wow cookie. Yeah. Wow. It's a really good cookie. Yeah, okay. it's right. an amazing cookie. <laughs>